This lesson is to show you how to create a color block t-shirt in Adobe Illustrator using the Shape Builder tool. So here's some examples of some color block tees and if you, many of you are probably familiar what I, what I mean when I say color block, but basically what it is, is it's just um, two fabrications that are usually cut and sewn together to make a color block look. So you can do many different variations of color block, but they usually they're always seamed together. Uh, sometimes they're printed on fabric to look that way, but most of these are all color block and sewn together as separate colored fabrics sewn together. And you can even color block out the neckline as well. So I have some examples here of a V-neck tee, which is what we're working on with a color block sleeves and a yoke. This one's a little bit more complicated because it's got a lot of different seaming going on. And then these are some other variations of color blocking out the sleeves or going a panel right through the middle. But let's get started. So you can do a lot of different variations of color block tees as you can see here by an example. And you can choose to do the V-neck tee on either the men or the woman's croaky figure and color block it as you see fit. So here's some examples of one where I color blocked out the sleeves and I also color blocked out the same sleeve color to be the rib color as well. So that's one example of a color block. This is one as well that I just did this color blocking on the sleeves, I did on the collar, and I also did what now is called a front yoke and back yoke panel that will be cut and sewn to the body. This one I actually left some mistakes on here that we can talk about later when we get further into the lesson. So let's get started. So you're gonna take your color block T, I'm sorry, you're gonna take your V-neck tee that you made and you either made a technical flat version or a stylized flat version from the previous lessons of how to make a, a V-neck t-shirt with rib collar. You're gonna take the front view and back view of those t-shirts that you finished and you're gonna copy and paste them. And what I would like you to do is copy and paste them and keep a copy of the V-neck rib collar tee in your library as is. I do not want you to um, lose this copy that's not color blocked. I want you to have that in your library at all times because you may not always want to have a color blocked version. You might want to have a t-shirt that you can fill the whole entire t-shirt in with solid color or pattern later on. So once you color block this t-shirt, what's going to happen is it's actually going to separate out the pieces that are color blocked or their own separate pieces. So that's why I say to keep a intact sketch that's one whole t-shirt available for you to use in your library at any time. Um, and then you can have a variation of it where it has color block sleeves or color block yoke, whatever you want. But please keep a copy of your t-shirt that is non-color blocked in your library. So the first thing you're gonna do to color block this t-shirt after you've saved a color, a, a copy of it that's non-color blocked is you are gonna actually, um, I'm gonna do a lesson where I use a shape builder tool. I'm gonna to color block out the sleeves and then I'm gonna show another lesson where I color block out and make a yoke design. Um, you can choose to do your own variation of a color block, but I do want you to use a shape builder tool in the way that I'm showing you tonight to um, make the color block version happen. So the first thing you're gonna do is click on your drawing. This is the shape builder tool. So in a double toolbar, remember we always need to be in a double toolbar, right here, about you know six or seven doors down from the black arrow on the left hand side is this tool right here called the shape builder tool and remember any tool you hover over in this toolbar will tell you its name if you hover over it shape builder tool so that's the tool we're going to use but before you have before you use the shape builder tool to separate out your shapes inside this join piece remember this whole body shape is one we drew it as one full piece all connected so what the shape builder tool is going to do is separate out pieces like the sleeve for instance and separate them out from the body so before you do that in order to use the shape builder tool you have to indicate to the shape builder shape builder tool what parts of the body you want to separate out so in order to do that you need to take the pen tool First, before you take the pen tool, let's look at our fill and stroke box. We are gonna work with a no fill in our, well, actually, let me click off the drawing. So click off the drawing for a second. Make sure in your fill box there's a no fill color, so click on the no fill. Click on the stroke box, and what I want you to do is double click on it and pick a random pop color, something you can see, out of the color picker window. So click on something in here. You can even scroll down here through the bars and pick whatever color hue you want, but pick something other than black, other than white. Hit OK. 
I want to pop color in here in the stroke box so that I can see what I'm drawing over top of this um, black and white CAD. Now take the pen tool. Pen tool, to separate out sleeves, what I want you to think about is the line that I'm getting ready to draw with the pen tool is a cutting line. So think picture as if I have a pair of scissors in my hand and I'm getting ready to cut up this t-shirt into, I'm getting ready to cut off the sleeves. Think about this line that I'm getting ready to draw with the pen as scissors. So if you think about it as scissors, you'll know where you need to actually slice the, the, the CAD into parts using the pen tool. So the pen tool, I'm gonna to take the pen tool and I'm gonna click outside of drawing and just watch where I'm going. To separate the sleeves, I'm gonna start down here. And because remember this armhole seam is a curve line, I'm gonna click here first and then I'm gonna do a curve line because I wanna make sure I, I draw my pen tool over top of the existing line that's already on, the already existing armhole seam that's already on my t-shirt because I wanna make sure when I slice off this, this sleeve separate from the body that this cutting line is the same curve line that I have here on my armhole. So if I did a really straight line with this, if I did a line like that, it's not gonna separate out my sleeve properly because it's not along the sleeve um, armhole seam. So I'm gonna draw my line point. I have three points in this line, four points. One, two, did a curve line in between these two, so I'm gonna click and hold and bend, and then I just did an extra line above it. So I draw my cutting line with the pen tool outside of the drawing. And that's important to do because the Shape Builder tool, if you just keep the line inside a drawing, it might not understand where exactly you want to cut. So you want to cut all the way through here, even though there's no body cut out here. You want to cut all the way through here, all the way up the armhole and out. So that's my cutting line. So once I've drawn that with the pen tool, now I'm going to take the black arrow, click on my drawing, and I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard, and I'm going to click on that cutting line, which for me is that purple, uh, pinkish purple line that I just drew. So that's why I want you to make sure your cutting line is a pop color so you can see it. So click on the body using the black arrow, hold shift key, and click on the cutting line so that you're selecting both things at once. Now we're going to use the Shape Builder tool, and here it is. Click on the Shape Builder tool, and I want you to watch what happens when I start using the Shape Builder tool. So if I click on it, if I hover over to the area that I want to separate, for me it's the sleeve, look what happens. There's like a grid. I'm going to zoom in for you. There's a grid that starts to appear. That's the Shape Builder tool indicating where you want to actually separate. So it's now saying to me, because I gave them that perfect cutting line along the armhole seam in that, in that pink color, I, the Shape Builder tool now knows that when I hover over this sleeve that that's going to be what I want to slice off. Look what happens if I hover over the body. Um, it, then it would slice off the body from the sleeve. I'm gonna click on the sleeve and all I have to do is click on it once and then you're gonna be like, oh, what? I don't understand, nothing happened. Well, watch what happens. So it did actually slice the sleeve off except I need to do one more thing so you can actually see it. I need to click and delete off this extra um, cutting line that I drew with the pen tool. So that's why I like to have it in a pop color so I can click on it and delete it Make sure you get all the little bits that are in there because there's some like, little stragglers. That's why I like to use that, that pop color in there so I can see over top of the black stroke line what was my cutting line. So now if I want to show you that, I that the Shape Builder tool actually separated that sleeve for me, I'm going to take the, um, let's do an object ungroup for a second. I have to ungroup the drawing. So that's really important. If you're in a group drawing, you need to object ungroup until the word ungroup is, is, when you click on the drawing, until the word ungroup is highlighted in gray, then ungroup it. And then you can actually take the black arrow and you can pull your sleeve right off. And now you can see my sleeve is one whole joint piece. It didn't break my line segments. My line segments are still joined. That's the great thing about the Shape Builder tool. It slices it off for you, but it doesn't break your line segment points from, from being joined. Same thing here in the body. My body shape is still joined. So that's great because I want to make sure I always have joined pieces even if I decide to separate out my pieces like sleeves. They still should be joined pieces So because I always want to fill them in with color. So I'm going to do that to the other sleeve real quick. Do pop color. It doesn't matter if you use the same pop color a second time because you're really only using that pen tool as a cutting line. So I'm going to click once and then I'm going to start my curve line because I'm just literally tracing over top of the armhole seam. 
and then I might not even go further than that. I just need to go a little bit above and below where I want to cut with my cutting line. So I'm going to take the black arrow, click on it once, click on the body shape once, hold shift, click on my cutting line. So you're going to click on the body and the cutting line holding shift. Then you take the shape builder tool, click on it, and now I can click on that grid that shows up and now I have a separate sleeve, but remember that you need to delete off those little bits of cutting line that are there before you start to see that your sleeve is separated. So now I have a sleeve separated. So now what I can do is select them both by holding shift and I can go to the fill color right here if it's on top and I can fill it in with something random, some random color in the color picker window and you guys can pick whatever color you want. So now I have, you can see I have sleeves that are separated. So that's really great um, that I have that. So I just have to go back and object ungroup the back view and do the same thing on the back to separate the sleeves. Just do that cutting line and separate it out. Um, or you can also just copy and paste that back view collar, get rid of this, this is just another alternative and then you can copy and paste the front view again, keep your sleeves color blocked, that way you don't have to do the cutting line again, and then you can just lead off the front collar. This is just another way to do your back view with the color block if you want to. Um, and then you just delete off the front collar, but what you'll have to do, just so you know if you do this, this is just what it's called a body CAD manipulation. You're taking one body cad and turning it into something else. So what you're gonna have to do if you do that is unfill your body cad with white, because remember there's this extra piece back here. So you need to get rid of that. And then you're just gonna have to reattach your um, front view because your front view had that other collar on it. So you just have to do that slight variation on the back view if you decide to use the front view because you color block the sleeves as your back view. So either way, you can either copy and paste the front view with the color block sleeves and then just cop delete a couple things, redo your back collar, or you can do the cutting line on the back view of your back collar drawing and just redo the sleeves to be color blocks. So that's one variation. If you wanted to do that yoke detail that I showed up here, and then I'll talk about them snakes later, um, what you're gonna do is the way you're gonna do a cutting line for that is you're gonna take the pen tool again Choose a pop color in your stroke box, so double click your stroke box and pick a pop color you can see. And take the pen tool, remember make sure there's no fill, only a stroke color. Take the pen tool and if you wanted to do something that where it blocks out the top part of the garment, you're gonna take your cutting line and do this. So take the pen tool and you're gonna start up here and remember, just decide how big you want your um, color blocking at the front to be. But remember, if you're going along the armhole seam, you're gonna have to do a curve line. So do a curve line there, click and hold and bend, follow the curve. And then what I would do is release because before I go across the body this way, it's really hard for you to go from curve line to straight line. So anytime I'm getting ready to do a curve line into a straight line, I release the tool and then I go back over it with the pen, I actually click on, oh, sorry. Take the white arrow, click on your line so you can see your line segments and your points. Take the pen tool, hover over that last point where you just left off until the little minus sign appears. So let me zoom in. And when the minus sign appears over that point, right, right there, click on it. That means you're getting ready to join back onto an existing point. Now I can go perfectly straight line holding shift across my body because again, I want to color block out the top part of the body. And then I'm gonna go straight into, you can go straight lines to curve lines, but curve lines to straight lines are really hard. So you wanna release. So I can go straight into a curve line now. Click and hold and bend. Go outside of the drawing again. So this is my this is the way my cutting line is gonna look if you wanted to do some kind of um, color blocking at the top part of the garment CAD. So just remember, curve lines into straight lines, release the tool, go to the arrow and just release for a second, go back to the pen tool, hover over the tool until you get that point to show a little minus sign, then click back on it. You can go straight lines to curve lines, no problem. It's only curve lines to straight lines that we have an issue. So, and again, check and see if you're over the armhole seam. You pretty much should be over the armhole seam almost flush. So if you're not, you can always take the white arrow, go over one of those points or pull up one of the curve handles 
and just manipulate a little bit if you if you didn't um, draw over top of the armhole seam in a good way. So here's my cutting line in green that I'm going to use to separate, tell the shape builder tool to separate this whole panel up here to be color blocked separate from the body at the bottom. So now that I have my cutting line in green indicated, I'm going to take the black arrow, click on my body shape, and you can notice that it didn't click on the sleeves. Remember, the sleeves are separate now. So I click on the body shape, which is literally just the torso of the body right now. Click on the body shape and then hold shift, click on your cutting line. So now my cutting line is in green. So I hold shift to select both. Then I use the shape builder tool. Then you can see my grid appears. And now it, it is separated, but remember we gotta delete off these little bit of green lines. So go into them, make sure they're all gone. You can just click on them with the white arrow and just delete them and make sure they're all gone before you separate out. You can take the black arrow now and you can see that my whole yoke panel is a separate piece. So I have separate piece here, separate piece here, and then a separate sleeve there. And because I had this front view, let me see here, because I drew this weird piece right here, if you remember, let me just pull this out. I drew this weird piece in here to kind of fill in the inside view of the back collar. That's already a separate piece, so I didn't need to actually use the shape builder tool to do that. So now I can just color block out this inside piece here, which is now a called a front yoke of my t-shirt, and I can go to the fill box, double click on it, pick another color. I can pick the same color if I want to here. If I want to do that, I just can take the eyedropper tool, which is right here. If you hover over, it's called the eyedropper tool. And I can select the same exact blue if I want to by eye dropping on the blue on the sleeve. Um, and I, because I have a separate piece inside the neck, which I actually have to move to get it, um, I can take the eyedropper tool and, and click on that as well. Um, or I can do a different color um, back there if I want to. So now you can see all your pieces are separated. If you're gonna move things around, just put them back in their right place. And now I have, and remember this inside piece is actually the back view of the shirt. So you might want to either keep it white if you wanted to keep the back view white and only color block out the front. Um, you can just do a color block panel in the front and not on the back. If you wanted to do it on the back, you're gonna make the same cutting line that I just did, where it starts up here along the armhole, goes all the way across and then back up the armhole and you're gonna use the same blue. And if you do that back here, that means this inside piece inside the neck also needs to be the same color that you show back here because this part in here is actually the back of the shirt showing through the front. Now the color in the rib, you are gonna take the white arrow and you're just gonna click on your collar shape. And the, in the front, you remember we had this big long V shape all the way across that was joined. You wanna make sure that that's the shape you click on, not the actual rib shape. So make sure that's the rib shape. You can see it's only, um, the clipping mass of the rib is only half of the rib. So you wanna make sure you're clicking on, and it might take a minute for you to click on it properly. Click on it using the white arrow until you see all the blue lines and vector points as the one continuous V-neck shape collar. Once you get that, you can, you can see, click on your fill box and you can pick a different color. Color block out the, the collar to be a different color completely if you want. Let's do, I'm gonna do like a grayish color. So there's my rib. And then the same thing for back here. So if I wanted to eye drop on the same rib color, because remember this rib is one continuous piece, so this should be the same color. So if you do rib color here, one color should be the same in the inside. So you can actually click on that collar shape again, use the white arrow until the white um, fill box is on top. Then you can take the eyedropper tool and just make sure your eye drop in inside of the color of the front collar, not on the black rib line, but the actual color. So if you have to zoom in, you can zoom in so you can see where the middle of that circle is that you're eye dropping on is the actual color of the rib, not the rib line, the black rib lines. So that's how you would do a color block T. If you wanted to do something even more, you could do, you know, you can make a cutting line um, through the vertical. Remember, just pick a pop color, no stroke color. You can make a cutting line straight through the middle if you wanted to do 
some kind of shape builder tool um, with an additional color blocking, you would have to just click on the body shape at the bottom and hold shift to click on your cutting line and then do another um, shape builder grid inside here. And that would create a vertical slice through your body shape and give you another area to color block. So there's a couple different variations of the way you do. Just think about your cutting lines. Think about um, filling in with different colors. You have the option to definitely, I would separate out the sleeves for sure, but you also have an option to do another color block area, like a yoke or slice through the body, whatever you want to do. Make sure that you have a color block version on the front and the back. So you want to also color in this back collar as well. So the, your finished CAD should have something that looks like this. I'm going to talk about these mistakes now though. So if you run into this issue at home when you're filling in your CAD with color, if you see that something happens like this, for instance, your armhole seam has this little slice of white and you don't know why, click on it with the white arrow on the armhole seam and go to your fill box. Does your fill box have a white color in it? If it does, click on the no fill. Remember what I said in earlier lessons, all the things that I refer to as loose pieces, things like armhole seams, top stitching, fabric motion lines, all those things are loose pieces. They just sit on top of the body. They're not joined pieces to the body shape. Those always should only have a stroke color, never a fill color. So if you start to see random things like this happen, where you get these random slices of color white coming through your um, body cat and you didn't put in white in yourself, um, that's because something is a loose piece and it's filled with white. You don't need that. So if you fill in your rib collar, for instance, remember the rib, at the center of a rib has a stroke line all the way through before you turned it into a clipping mask. So that stroke line could be filled with white, like it is right here. So if I click on the center of my stroke line that I used to make my clipping mask in my rib in the earlier lesson, if I click on it because I saw this white line appear and I don't know why, if I click on it, I look at my fill box, oh, now I know why, because it's got a white fill color in it. It should have a no fill color in it. So anytime you see stuff like this, just do a no fill and even zoom in on your top stitching because look what happened with my top stitching. This is the correct top stitching right here, right here with no white gaps in between. And this is the one that's wrong um, because you can see up close, there's white little line stroke lines in there. It's because again, it's a loose piece. Click on it with the white arrow and look at your fill box. It should have a no fill in top stitching. No fill color, only a stroke color. So if any of those things happen when you're at home, and you don't know why, just refer to this part of the lesson where the mistakes were, and you'll see that if you check your, if you click on it with the white arrow, all those loose pieces, if you see a white in your fill box, then you know why. So do your color block version, front and back view, and then what I want you to do is copy and paste your color block T onto your CAD template. Here's our CAD template that's blank with our CAD number and our style description front back view, your name and date. Keep that blank template always to use and copy over for new CADs as we go along. But once you submit a project to me, I want you to complete the CAD template with new information. So this is CAD number one, color block V-neck t-shirt is the description. You're going to keep your front and back view. You're going to copy and paste your grouped body drawing. So make sure when you're done, you do an object group. You hover over with the black arrow, object group, and you object group your front view and you object group your back view. These are already grouped, so the word group is gray. Group your front view, group your front back view, and do this every time you submit a CAD to me, and then fill out the new date on your CAD template, and then you submit it in Canvas.